Hey guys, so if you watched yesterday's clothing haul video, I ended up taking those naturalizer shoes that I got at Marshalls, I ended up taking them back. Um, I When I finished the video, I took off those Primark shoes that I had on and I thought, well, I should test out the naturalizers. And I only had them on for, oh, I don't know, 10 minutes maybe. And I was like, these, these are not comfortable once you actually start walking around in them. Because when you're at the store and you're trying them on, you know, I, I kind of like put the shoes on and just kind of walk around in little circles a little bit, but that's not really any kind of a test. So uh, word to the wise, if you buy shoes at Marshall's, do not take those stickers off the bottom of the shoes because when I brought them back, they had to go by the number on my receipt and the number on the box. And for whatever reason, in their handheld computer thing that they use, it came up as a completely different shoe. And they tried to give me, uh, the shoes were $39.99. So I was supposed to get a penny less than $40 back and they tried to give me $30. And I said, no, 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 I paid 40, not 30. And they said, oh, well, according to our records, you bought some brown shoes. I said, no, I bought two pairs of black shoes and a black shirt. That's what's on the receipt. So anyways, I, I had to kind of argue back and forth with them, but I did get my money back. But um, yeah, they uh, it, it got confusing because I think I had taken the sticker off. So if you're absolutely positive you're going to keep some shoes from them, go ahead, peel the sticker off the bottom. But if you're not sure, leave it on there because it makes the return a lot easier for yourself and for them. <laughs> so word to the wise there. And this is the, the shirt from Marshalls that I showed you. And I think what I'm going to do is when I finish my makeup in this video and then I go dry my hair, um, I think I'm going to film a separate video with an outfit of the day to show you what I paired with this shirt. Um, so yeah, that will be a separate video. Okay, so today's video is a get ready with me. I have three products in front of me that I have purchased recently that will be incorporated into this and I'll tell you which things are new when I get to them. So I'm going to start off with my Beauty Treats Lip Care in Jojoba. And this is from shopmissay.com. We had lost our electricity for several hours. I mean like eight hours on two different occasions over the summer. And so it got really hot in my house those two times. And ever since then, this has got a different smell to it. So I think I'm probably going to have to throw this out because, I mean, it doesn't smell bad. It just smells different. I don't know. I don't know if it's gone bad or not. Probably not. It's probably just getting older, but, or it could be I'm getting, you know, further down into the tube. I don't know. Probably should throw it out. Because, um, yeah, those, those two days that we lost the electricity um, can definitely affect your makeup. I remember two summers ago, it may have even been three summers ago, we got a tropical storm and our power was off for several days. No electricity. It got really hot in my house and some of my makeup went rancid. They were all cream products. Um, it, I had liquid highlighters, liquid blushes. Yeah, the, I had to throw several things away which was disappointing but um, that's how it goes I guess okay next I'm gonna use uh, Maybelline baby skin as a foundation primer no matter how many foundation primers I play around with or use from my collection this is something I come back to time and time again because I love the way any foundation looks over this if you've never tried it give it a shot because it's affordable, it's easily available, and as far as working for any skin type, 
I wouldn't use this if you had oily skin. This um, probably wouldn't work if you had oily skin because my skin is normal to dry. And one of the things that I like about this is it doesn't dry out my skin. And it's, it's one of those silicon primers that have got a lot of slip to it. With this type of primer, I definitely like to use my fingers. And I think that's another reason why I like this, because it it's easy to blend with your fingers. And you whereas if I use a foundation primer that works better with a brush, sometimes you feel like you're not really getting every square inch of your skin. Uh, this is the foundation that I've been using pretty much ever since I bought it. The CoverGirl and Olay Simply Ageless foundation and my shade is 220 creamy natural and you can tell that this is well loved see there's a big hole in the middle there and again my skin is normal to dry so this is a foundation that just works well with my skin type because it has Olay skin care mixed into it And it's funny because it's not even winter. Winter is when my skin does have a tendency to get dry. But I don't know. I think when you get older, you almost can never get enough moisture on your skin. See the coverage I'm getting on my redness? So even though it's a cream product, still getting really good coverage. Or I should say, even though it's not a, like a mattifying foundation. These hair clips that I had showed you in a previous video that I got from Sally Beauty Supply, you know these really come in handy for a lot of things. As far as like pinning my hair back instead of putting it in an elastic. So I can kind of see why a lot of people use these. I'm hesitating because I'm thinking about putting foundation on the eye area because see all that redness, but I think that it can be not the greatest idea to mix products. Like if I put my foundation, then I put my eyeshadow primer on top of it. Sometimes, you know, it's not going to layer that well, so I think I'm going to not do that. Okay, for concealer... Uh, today I'm going to be using the Maybelline Instant Age Rewind for dark circles in the shade Fair. And just like I said about the foundation primer, this is a concealer that, you know, I stray away from it for a while and I use different things. Then I come back to this because it's great for somebody that has normal to dry skin. Very moisturizing. What I do with my concealer now is I put some on and then I use my foundation brush to blend it in. And make sure you get in that corner because a lot of times that area gets like neglected and then you've got like a red, well if you have redness in your skin, you. I've got like a red area there.
Okay, the next product that I'm going to use is one of the things that I purchased recently. This is the ELF Perfect Finish HD Powder. And it comes in a compact. And it has a mirror. This is the product. It's stark white. There is no applicator, but that's okay because I want to use my own anyway. And what I have been doing lately is I use a makeup sponge that has the slightest bit of dampness to it. When I wash this particular sponge, um, this is not available individually. It came with a set, so it doesn't really matter what it is. Uh, you know, th there's not really a huge difference from brand to brand with makeup sponges, I feel. But anyway, um, when I wash this, the next day, it's still just a little bit damp. And that's perfect because when I apply my powder, what I like to do is I like to just press this into the powder and then just press it into my skin. And I feel like this is the best application for any powder, pressed or loose. But pressed powder is a little easier to work with. I do really like the Cody Loose Powder because the coverage is fantastic and the color works good, I think, on anybody's skin tone. Whereas with this white one, if you're not fair, I think this could be potentially a problem. I mean, it's supposed to be translucent, but it's obviously not. But I do like this um, formula. It's very nice. And if you left this in your purse, you could do touch-ups if you wanted to. And it has a really nice mirror on it. And it's not going to break the bank because it was $6. And it's easy to find at any store that sells e.l.f. Okay, so once I finish, I'm looking for redness here, and I see some right here. So it's not going to get rid of it completely, but it takes it down just a little bit. So see, isn't that a nice finish? I mean, I have kind of large pores. They're not really my pores so much as they are acne scars. So that's why I like to use powder even though I have normal to dry skin because it just is going to look make your skin look really flawless because a lot of people have said to me, oh, you have such beautiful skin. I really don't. <laughs> it's just makeup can cover a multitude of sins. Okay, so that was one of the new products that I bought and big thumbs up, really like it. And then for the next three products, I talked about this in a previous video where I am now doing highlight, blush, and bronzer in the opposite order in which I used to because of a person that um, suggested it to Emily Noel. And I, I talked about that, who it was, blah, 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 in another video. So we're going to start with my highlighter today, which lately I've been using the NYX Born to Glow Liquid Illuminator in Sunbeam. I love this highlighter, but I've had it for a while, so I may have to purge it soon. So I just take some on my finger and mix it on my other index finger and then go right across the top of my cheekbones up into my temple. Then I take all my fingers and blend it. You know, liquids can be tricky, but I feel like this method works well. Yeah, liquids tend to be, work better with your fingers. Ask any makeup artist and they will tell you that. Okay, for blush, I'm going to use the same blush I always use since I repurchased it. Milani Baked Blush in Luminoso. And this is a Real Techniques contour brush, but I like it for blush. 
So I'm just gonna apply that and see over the highlighter rather than under it works nicely. And I'm gonna go in with my Physician's Formula Butter Bronzer in light and this um, AOA Studio Jumbo Fan Brush. Put some of that on there and contour. And then go along the hairline. And the jawline. See the difference that makes? I, I just feel like it blends seamlessly. There's no blotchiness of any particular product. It just all meshes together much better. Okay, I'm going to use my Amuse Cosmetics eyeshadow primer. This is available on shopmissay.com. And I'm going to use a Sephora Pro concealer brush to apply it. This is in the shade Clean Slate. It's the pinky beige one. It also is available in a yellow beige. I consider this to be a dupe for MAC Painterly Paint Pot. I mean, if somebody was going to say, you know, hey, I'll give you a brand new container of this or the MAC Paint Pot, I would take the MAC Paint Pot because the formula is probably a little bit better, but this is pretty darn close and this is only a buck. Okay, for an eyeshadow palette today, I found the Academy of Color 6 shade eyeshadow palette that I talked about in a previous video. This is $5 at Kohl's for six eyeshadows. And yeah, I talked about this. I said I was going to go look for it. I did. I found it. I purchased it. Five bucks. There's what the back looks like. Kohl's, five dollars. Here's the inside. This is, would make a nice travel palette. I said in that video, why did they put two gold shadows in this? They didn't. It was the photograph made it look that way. So here's what you get. You get a contour shade, which is like a light brown. And then you get a gold, which is uh, like a frost finish. You get a frosty pink, a frosty mauve. You get a matte purpley dark gray, I would say. It's a dark gray with a purple undertone. This is the shade that on the photograph, or in the photograph, look like gold. It is not. It's pewter. So, pewter eyeshadows are not that common. So I was surprised, but happy to see that in here. So, I've used every shade in this palette except for the gold. Uh, like I mentioned on Twitter this morning, gold does not look that great on me. The only time I can pull it off is if it's a light gold. And this is more like a mid, mid-tone gold, I would say. So that's the only shade that I haven't used. So um, let's go with the pewter because that does have some gold in it, but I just love those shades. I'm going to use a MAC um, shader brush and I'm going to go right into that pewter shade. So when you look at this color, it's like that antique metal type color. You know, you can see silver, you can see gold, you can see like a brassy color. It's like three colors in one.
And I feel like this is a color that would work for just about everybody because even if, if you don't look good in silver or you don't look good in gold, this is like somewhere in the middle. So no matter what color your skin is, I feel like you can pull this off. And then I'm going to take this Morphe M506 brush and I'm going to go into that light brown. Speaking of Morphe, um, the texture of these eyeshadows kind of reminds me of Morphe eyeshadows. So if you're wondering about Academy of Color and what their eyeshadows are like, they're quite similar. I like them a lot. I have tons of Academy of Color eyeshadow palettes that are no longer available. The thing is, they're only sold at Kohl's. And when they're there, they're there, and they won't be there forever. There's nothing permanent in the range. It's all pretty much limited edition. When it's gone, it's gone. But I thought they were gone completely. But they um, they came back with this. This is like a back to school themed palette. And it's not in the makeup section. It's in a, they have this uh, little thing in the middle of the aisle. One of the main, the main aisle of the store. And it's got little cubicles in it with small amounts of different beauty related products that are inexpensive, it's in there. So don't look for it in the makeup section. Just that main aisle of the store, there's like little cubicle boxes. And if you can't find it for some reason, ask somebody. Because that's what they're there for. They help you find things if you can't find them. Well, that's one of the reasons why they're there, I should say. Okay, so I'm just doing a little bit at a time. Because I don't want too much. And then I like to go right on the edge of the lid space. And drag that out to that outer V section. Always going outward. Just to give it like a little bit of definition there. Okay, then I go in with this Zoeva pencil brush, small pencil brush, and go back into that brown and drag that right along the lower lash line. And that's one of the ways that I use this palette. It's pretty versatile. And I'm just going to curl my lashes. This is a Shiseido lash curler. You can find this in those little cubby boxes right at the checkout at Ulta usually. And Essence Lash Princess False Lash Effect Mascara. This is the one with the green trim.
Now the third product that is new is a repurchase of something that I haven't had in my collection in a while and I remember that I used to love it and I was looking at my products in that category the other day and um, I have the product already but in a different color I just wanted to try a different color to see if that would work better than what I used to use and it did not I'm talking about uh, brow products I love the formula of the elf brow pencils and I bought the blonde one not too long ago and no that color is all wrong for me and so I repurchased taupe I used to love this and I thought why did I ever stop using this such a great product so inexpensive um, how much was this uh, three dollars I want to say I think and it's got the spoolie on the other end the formula is fantastic but yeah this is taupe and this is a very good color for me and I feel like you know for a lot of people did the camera just get a little bit fuzzy looks like it wants to go out of focus a little bit either that or um my brows just need a, a, a lot of product so looks fuzzy but yeah this formula oh my god you almost don't even need the spoolie because as you're applying this you're like blending the product into your brow as you're applying it oops So I don't know what happened. My camera just stopped and I lost the footage from the end of the video. But I can just tell you all I did after I finished my brows was I applied this Clinique Black Honey Lipstick because I told you that I was going to use that in an upcoming video so that you could see the color. So if you saw the rest of the video, that was my lips without the Black Honey. And this is my lips with the Black Honey lipstick. And this is the one that I said if you weren't familiar with this lipstick and you saw it in a store, you would think, oh my god, I would never wear that. Well, that's what it looks like applied. So it doesn't go on like that. And it's going to look different on everybody depending on your natural lip color. But I feel like this goes with everything. And this is the quintessential fall lipstick. And it feels like a tinted balm. So feels wonderful, pretty color, very natural looking, very versatile. Thanks for watching, guys, and subscribing. And I will most likely see you next in a outfit of the day video. I'm gonna film, I'm gonna go dry my hair now and then film a separate video and show you the rest of this outfit that I have on. Bye.